Good day everyone, this is Dr. Soper here, and today I will be giving you a brief tutorial on how to create entity relationship diagrams using Microsoft Visio 2013. To begin, we first need to select the proper template which will allow us to create our entity relationship diagrams using the crow's foot set of symbols. In my case, this template is located here. However, when you load Microsoft Visio 2013 on your computer, it may appear farther down in the list, so you may need to scroll down to find it. If it's not available on the list, just do a quick search at the top, and you should be able to locate the Crow's Foot Database Notation. So I will select the Crow's Foot Database Notation template and create a new document. And as we can see, Visio has loaded for us, over here on the left, a set of stencils that we can use for creating our entity relationship diagrams. And here in the center of the page is our drawing canvas. And this is where we will actually be drawing our entity relationship diagrams. I will begin by making a few modifications to the environment. First, I want to change the orientation of my drawing canvas to landscape mode. This will give me a little more space from left to right. And I also want to change the theme of my drawing because I simply like this slice theme better than the standard theme. So I will choose the slice theme. Now before I begin I should note that if you are familiar with Microsoft Visio 2010 many things have changed in the 2013 release of the program. Visio 2013 no longer includes the elaborate set of database designer tools that were such a familiar part of Visio 2010. This gives us much more flexibility in creating our diagrams. However, if you are an experienced Visio user, you may miss some of the tools and capabilities that Microsoft has decided to dispense with in the latest release. That having been said, let's create our entity relationship diagram. The first thing that I will do is drag and drop some entities onto my drawing canvas. And in this case I'm just going to create three entities. So I will drag these out here one after the other and just drop them anywhere that I like so that I can make a lovely drawing and I'll try to center those a little bit. Ah, good enough for me. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that we can have a better view of the entire diagram. That seems acceptable. So we have three entities. We can see that by default they are all given the generic name of entity name and also by default each new entity comes with three attributes, one of which is already marked as the primary key, indicated here by a square with the letters PK inside for primary key. Let's begin by changing the names of our three entities. In this example, I want to create a database diagram which shows the connection between an order and the various items that might appear in that order. So I'm changing the name of these entities simply by double clicking on the entity name and then typing in a new name. So in this example, I want to show the relationship between an order and an item such that each order can contain 
potentially many items, and each item might belong to many orders. As an analogy, imagine that you are going to the grocery store and you want to purchase several different items and perhaps for our example we purchase some apples and some milk and some cereal. So we have three items that will be a part of our order. Of course another customer could come into the store and select a series of items and they might choose even some of the same items that we selected. Therefore an order should be able to contain many items. In our case our order contains apples and milk and cereal but each item should also be able to belong to more than one order. So I can purchase cereal, you can purchase cereal, the next person can also purchase cereal as part of their order. In order to accomplish this task we're going to need three tables. Our first table is an order table, our second table is an item table, and our third table is what we would call a lookup table or an associative entity which allows us to actually implement the many-to-many -many relationship between order and item. Next, let's identify some primary keys for our order and item tables. Just as before, when I double-clicked on the name of the entity or the name of the table in order to change the name, I simply double-click on the name of an attribute in order to change its name. In this case I'm defining the primary key for our order table which I will call order ID and when I click outside of the entity the new name is applied. I will follow a similar practice for defining the primary key for item. So I'll create a primary key for item which I will name item ID and when I click outside of the entity the new name will be applied. Next I will create just some additional attributes for each of these two tables for the purpose of completeness. So our order might have an order date and our item might have a description. Now I have these extra attributes in both the order table and the item table which I would want to delete. So what I will do is simply click on the attribute name and then I will press the delete key on my keyboard to delete the attribute. And you'll notice when I press the delete key, Visio will automatically redraw the table for us according to the new number of attributes. I will also delete the extra attribute out of the item table, again by clicking on the attribute name and then selecting the delete key on my keyboard. Next, I want to define a composite primary key for my order item table which will enable us to create the many-to-many -many relationship between the order and item tables. So I will first use the existing primary key. I will double click on the name and I will type in order ID for the first component of the primary key. I will then double click on the second attribute in the table to create the second component of our composite primary key, which in this case will be item ID. And I now want to mark the item ID attribute 
as a primary key. I can do this simply by selecting the attribute with a single click and then right clicking on the attribute and selecting the set primary key option from the right click menu which appears. And when I select this option we will see that Visio will draw a primary key square to the left of the attribute name. Now, because this is a composite primary key, I know that each of these attributes, order ID and item ID, is also acting as a foreign key in my order item table. So I will right click on each item and also select the set foreign key option. And we will see Visio will then draw a foreign key square, which indicates that the attribute, in addition to being part of the primary key, is also serving as the foreign key link back to its parent table. I will do the same for item ID, again simply right clicking on the attribute name and selecting the set foreign key option. Next, I will define one additional non-key attribute in the order item table, and that is perhaps the quantity, that is the number of this item that is actually involved in the order. So perhaps I'm buying two bags of apples instead of just one. Quantity. Now you may notice that Visio by default will draw a line which separates the primary key from the non-key attributes. In this case, I have a line that is currently separating my order ID and item ID attributes in my order item table, but because both of these attributes are part of the primary key, I want to move this line down. And I can do that simply by clicking on the line and dragging it down to where it needs to go. When I release the mouse, the line, which Visio calls a primary key separator, is now correctly separating my primary keys from my non-key attributes. Next, let's say that we accidentally forgot to add an attribute to the item table, and we want to add a new attribute. We can do that easily by grabbing an attribute shape from the collection of stencils on the left and dragging that on top of our item table. And you will see Visio draws a little orange bar where the new attribute will be located. When I release the mouse, my new attribute appears in the item table. In this case, let's say that we want this attribute to be the price that we charge for the item. Okay, our diagram is nearly complete. The last step is to create the relationship lines, which will interconnect our three tables. And I like to do this first by just dragging a new relationship onto the drawing canvas and dropping it. And you can see by default that Visio creates one end of the relationship as a one and only one, and another end of the relationship as a zero to many. These are kind of small, so I think I will make those larger. To do this, I first select the relationship line, and then I can right-click on the relationship and select the Format Shape option. This will cause the Format Shape panel to appear on the right. And in this case, I want to make some adjustments to the line. So I will expand the line option. And the first thing I want to do is change the size of 
the crow's foot symbols on each end of the line. So for our purposes, I will select Jumbo for each of these. And as I make these changes, you'll see that Visio has updated the line out on our drawing to show larger symbols. Now that my symbols are correct, I will connect the tables together. To begin, I will connect the order table to the order item table. And I want the one side of the relationship to touch the order table, so I will drag the end of the line, that is the one end of the line, onto the order item table. You'll see that I have multiple points where I might attach the line, here as shown by a green box, or here. I can also drag the line on top of a particular attribute. So if I want the line to be connected directly to the order ID attribute, I could drop it here, or the order date attribute here. But in my case, I want the line to be attached to the order table as a whole, so I will move my mouse until I get a green box around the entire shape, and then when I release the mouse, the one end of the line will now be glued to the order table as a whole, rather than to any particular attribute contained therein. Repeating the process for the many end of the line, I will connect this to my order item table, and releasing the mouse, these two tables are now connected. If I were to move them around on the drawing canvas, you will see that Visio will automatically redraw and reposition the lines as necessary. Now, I'm feeling kind of lazy, so since I like the way that my current relationship line looks, I will just select it and make a copy by pressing Ctrl-C on my keyboard. I will then click on the drawing canvas and press Ctrl-V to paste that line. Now I have a copy of my previous relationship line, which, using the same strategy, I can then use to interconnect my item table to my order item table. And perhaps I want to reposition my item table a little bit so that my lines look nice and clean. The last thing that we need to discuss is changing the cardinality symbols, that is the crow's foot symbols, to something different. Right now, for example, on this line we have one and only one on the side which touches the order table, and zero to many on the side which touches the order item table. Let's make a change. To do this, I will click on the relationship line, right click, and then select Format Shape. This will load the Format Shape panel and using the options for begin arrow type and end arrow type I can change the symbols to whichever symbols I prefer. So we can see right now symbol number 29 is selected for the begin arrow type which is a 1 or a 0 to many. Let's say that I want to change that to a 1 to many so I will select shape number 28 and as soon as I select this, Visio has already updated my diagram to reflect the fact that this is now a one-to-many relationship. I will repeat the process for my other relationship line. Again, in this case, changing the begin arrow type to a one-to-many. I could, of course, change the opposite end of the line simply by adjusting the end arrow type say for example that we wanted to use a 0 to 1 relationship instead of a 1 to 1.
In that case, we would select shape number 30. And Visio would then create a 0 to 1 relationship for us. However, for the purposes of this diagram, I am perfectly satisfied with a 1 and only 1. So I will revert back to the original selection. Well, my friends, thus ends our very brief introduction to data modeling in Microsoft Visio 2013. Again, if you were previously familiar with Visio 2010, you will notice that many of the old features have been removed. Data modeling in Visio 2013 is much more flexible and less rigid than it was in Visio 2010. However, there is a cost to that flexibility. Specifically, because the data designer can now essentially do whatever he or she wants in his or her data model, there is now a much greater responsibility on the designer to properly implement the rules of high quality data modeling the software will no longer enforce the basic rules of high quality data modeling. And so now it is the designer who must take up the mantle of that responsibility. I hope you're up to the challenge. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.